Why do people in Britain care so much for animals and pets? Why do they set up so many charity shops raising money and rescue and rehoming centers? More than 50% of the British families have a pet. Dogs, cats, birds and rabbits are the most common pets in British households. Adam Woodward is working in the Animal Lifeline Serendipity Kennels. The voluntary group saves abundant and unwanted dogs for already 36 years. A large portion of Britain are animal lovers, you know, I mean, if it wasn't for animal lovers, there wouldn't be a place like this in existence, you know, to take care of dogs or other animals. You feel like you're doing something special every day because, you know, I arrive at work and I walk into the kennels and I've got 75 dogs that are all happy to see me. I mean, you imagine if you go home to your dog, how excited that one dog is. Now imagine that times by 75. You know, it's, it's, it's a fantastic feeling to know that you're making a difference to all these dogs' lives. But if the British are a nation of animal lovers, why 250,000 pets are homeless? Why do places for abundant pets like the kennels exist? Usually it's a change in circumstances, you know, like a relationship breakup or moving house to an accommodation where they can't have dogs anymore. Um, children come along and people, you know, they don't want dogs around the kids. And unfortunately, we do have dogs that can be difficult to handle and they will be very difficult to rehome. But our kennels, we have a policy where we will never put a healthy dog to sleep. I think as well, the longer they've been here, the more, you know, people will always say, oh, you know, how long have you had this dog? And when you say it's been here for six years, it might put people off, which, you know, it's unfair, but it's, you can't make people want certain dogs. Um, and the, the breed as well, Staffordshire Bulls, for example, Rottweilers, people see that breed and they think that they're going to be bad dogs, and they're not. It's just a reputation that they've gained from the wrong people having them. But we, we do have dogs that stay here for a very long time, unfortunately. Various organisations and law protect animal rights and cases of animal abuse end up in court. Animal cruelty and neglect convictions has increased with 24% last year. However, animal rights organisations like the RSPCA, which exists since the beginning of the 19th century, have shown that British really are animal lovers. Typical thing can be st starving uh, an animal. Um, sometimes they've been left outside and it's been really cold weather. There was an instance of um, an animal that was so cold that it actually frozen to death. Uh, and other instances, like our own dog, it was through kindness or, um, you know, the, the lady had Alzheimer's and hadn't realised that she'd fed the dog, so she kept feeding it so that the dog was really fat, so that was cruelty in another way. Um, other times, sometimes we people who have seen this with cats, for instance, they put a collar on the cat and the cat grows, but they don't make the collar bigger, so the, you know, the, the collar gets caught into the neck. Cruel cases of violence over animals are being convicted or banned on keeping a pet under the Animal Welfare Act. A dog lover, you can't understand it. You, you can't fathom why people get so frustrated for one. And yeah, dogs are frustrating, but they're worth, they are worth the effort. They shouldn't be allowed animals, people like that, should they be? They don't understand the love an animal gives. I mean, you can get love off a cat. Cats can be very affectionate. Um, but they give you something something special. They really are. Aren't you? Yes. The UK has a long democratic history, which has allowed it to pay more attention to animal rights and law and pet care, unlike developing countries who have more social problems. But what do pets give to people? What makes them so special for British? 
companionship obviously is the main one, but it can also be extremely good therapy for people uh, because they, it's something that they, you know, they have to look after and all and care for it in the same way perhaps you do a child. So it can be very therapeutic. Um, it would be lovely to see more people taking animals into old people's homes because they really respond well to seeing a, a, a cat or a dog, well, a dog rather, regularly. Um, some people will, uh, will have a dog for security, um, you know, because of having a dog in a house, it feels safer. They give a lot back, you know, they give you love, and, and they're very faithful, dogs are, and, and, uh, and sometimes they're like a child substitute, aren't they, really, you know. My sister keeps having grandchildren, so I have a dog instead because I'm jealous. When they look up to you, they, they accept you as part of their pack. They're my best friend. I trust them implicitly. They don't tell lies. Um, sit. Sit. Thank you. Good girl. Before I was born, my family had a dog. Um, and we've always had Labradors, but then we've ended up with two collies. Later on. Yeah, they go everywhere with us. We don't put them in a kennel or anything, you know, and they share the bed, but don't tell everybody. We were animal lovers, yes. I was I was born into a house that's got dogs. We had dogs, cats, rabbits, budgies, fish. I would I would much rather be around a dog than be around a person because, you know, there's there's no duplicity with dogs. What you see is what you get, you know, you know exactly where you stand with them and it's just a fantastic feeling. I, I just, I couldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. I wouldn't want to wear with people when I can wear with dogs, when I can wear with animals. Pets bring joy and stress relief. They are best friends for lonely people. It goes without saying that Brits are a nation of animal lovers. It is so easy to love the innocent, warm and cuddly creatures. Oh, uh -huh.